The advice and opinions expressed by the host of Autism Live and her guests are meant solely as suggestion and should not be in any way construed as child-specific advice. The Center for Autism and Related Disorders advises working with a board-certified behavior analyst who has experience with autism before starting any intensive behavioral intervention. Any choices you make in determining your child's treatment are completely at your own discretion. Welcome to Autism Live. I'm Shannon Penrod. We're coming to you from the Warner Center in Woodland Hills, California. This is the home for Autism Live. It is also the home for the Center for Autism and Related Disorders. So thrilled to be here with you on this wonderful Monday morning. We've got a great, great show for you. Uh, Traven's showing you some of the different ways that, or he's going to show you some of the different ways that you can connect with us here at the show. Uh, I want to remind you while he does that, our homepage is autism-live.com. Lots to do on that page, not the least of which is chat with us. At the very bottom of the page, there's a little chat button. Click on that. It opens up a box. You can type and hit enter and it shows up here on my screen. You can talk to me. You can talk to our guests and our experts. So we really enjoy it when you write in to us. <clears throat> hey, I mentioned that we have experts on the show, and that's one of the things that I'm proudest of in the show because we want you to get the information that you need. But please don't be mistaken. We have lots of experts on the show. I'm not one of them. I am uh, an autism mom and a former teacher, and I'm a proud autism mom, right? Thrilled to be here with you to help you to connect you to the resources that you need. We always say here that we're about information and inspiration. That's the goal here. If we can help you, and if I can, you know, if we together, collectively, our team can help you to be able to chase down the resource that you need, man, that makes my day. We want to be able to save you time and money whenever possible. And we want you to be here and feel like you're home with us because we are a big, beautiful community. And I always say that this show serves the greater autism community, the bigger autism community. Of course, that starts with individuals who are on the spectrum themselves. Of course, that starts with them. But then beyond that, it, it, it goes to everybody who cares about them. We include you in this community because we're not going to agree on everything, but we will agree on the one thing that we all have in common, that we believe that individuals on the spectrum have dignity and deserve respect and and deserve to have the support and resources that they need to do the things that they want to do in their life right is there anybody out there that does if you don't agree with that write into me and you know and expand my mind tell me tell me what's happening um, but if we can get together on those things, then I believe that we can do something good every single day. And that makes me happy. All right. Um, on Mondays, we like to start the show with something we fondly refer to as bum, bada, bum, the jargon of the day. This is when we take on one word, one phrase, one acronym. We try to figure out what in the hey, nani, nani, are the experts talking about? And what does it have to do with me? We give you the actual definition whenever possible. I try to make fun of it because that's how I find my joy <laughs> and then we give you a working definition which often makes the experts crazy I take joy in that as well but hopefully it helps us to be able to understand what's happening so that we can use this term in a way that gets us further down the road right that's really what it's all about so today's uh, phrase it's right there for you token economy doesn't that sound like like something we'd hear about from the politicians that doesn't sound particularly good, no. Uh, this is the problem with some of this jargon is that it sounds like something it isn't. So let's take a look at our actual definition of token economy. Token economy, earning generalized and conditioned reinforcers as an immediate consequence for specific behaviors, then exchange them for backup reinforcers. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. It's so convoluted that unless you have a degree in psychology, what? What does that even mean? Uh, earning generalized condition reinforcers? Hey, folks, if I don't know what a token economy is, I sure don't know what that is, right? 
Let's throw that away for a moment. We'll come back to that later. And let's take a look at our actual definition and see if we can't make heads or tails of this. Token economy, when a child, but it's really anybody, earns tokens, stickers, coins, or something else that is motivating so they can trade it for something else. So here's the thing. We know in the principles of behavior that when, if, if I say to you, um, do this and you get this reward and you've tried it once and you've gotten it and now you go, hey, I like the reward. This isn't that hard. I'm going to do it over and over and over again because I like the reward, right? Um, that that's a method of teaching and it's a lot better than, you know, like twisting somebody's arm and saying, do that worksheet, right? Um, it actually works. It's why we all have paychecks at our jobs because it's a reinforcer. So we come back every day to work, right? But sometimes like a paycheck, you, you don't get a paycheck every single minute for every single task that you do, right? You know, you, you fill out a form that you have to do at work and it's time intensive and you fill out the report and you, and you turn it in and you're like, where's my reward, right? Well, you know that your paycheck is going to come and you know when your paycheck is going to come, but it's not coming till a week from Friday. So why do you keep doing it? Because you know that it's coming. You absolutely know that it's coming. For a child, that's a little bit... Mm, it's like hard to remember. Am I going to get paid for that? Am I, mm, I don't know. So what we do is we give them, it's called the token economy. And basically what it is, is it gives immediate reinforcer to say, good job, good job, good job. And, and each, you know, good job comes with a sticker that goes on a chart. And if you get enough of them, you get the break or, or it can be that, you know, for every one that you get, you get something when you go home. Token economies are really good when you're not in the place where you can give the thing that's going to reinforce the behavior. So, for instance, in a classroom, the kid's sitting in the, in the desk and the teacher wants him to do the good work, but she can't, if he does do the good work, she can't stop everything and give him his food reinforcer then, or she can't, you know, whatever the thing is that's reinforcing to that kid, because she's got to keep teaching, right? So instead, she, you know, she'll say good job and praise, and she walks over and puts the gold star there. And Bobby knows if I get 10 gold stars, I get to have X, Y, and Z when I get home. Or for every gold star, when he gets home, he gets 10 minutes worth of playing his game, right? So Bobby goes, cha-ching, I got a gold star because he knows it's going to translate into something that's a paycheck later on. That's really a token economy. How about as a parent, when you go into the grocery store and you really want to see good behavior in the grocery store and you don't want to go through the meltdown when they get to the checkout, right? Now, you could yink, 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 womp, 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 at them. How effective is that? That doesn't work at all, right? Or you can get out your phone and download an app that has a token economy on it. And you say, okay, so we're going to go in the store and I want to see really good behavior. And, you know, as long as you can keep these three tokens here, um, you know, when we leave, then you're going to get whatever, right? Um, whatever it is that the child is really going to be reinforced because it can work positive or negative. You've got the three tokens, don't lose them, and you lose tokens for whining or tantruming or whatever you define it with the child, right? We have a video of where we went to the LA Zoo and I didn't have time to bring a token economy with me and my kid was a little bit older and I was going to be holding a microphone and interviewing all these people and I wanted him to be on his best behavior. And so I went to a BCBA and I was like, what kind of a token economy can I do when I'm not holding anything else and I can't have my phone with me? And she said, can you keep a pen? And I said, yes, I can put a pen in my back pocket, but I got to be able to hold the microphone. And, and she said, okay, so you say to him, I need... I'm going to make a mark every time on my hand that you do something really remarkable. And if we get to 30, we're going to in and out Burger afterwards. This is a big deal here in California. And he, man, he was on it. And he was like, I'm going to get 30. I'm getting in and out. And, he, and every time I would, and, and I would, you know, he got that reinforcer because I would, I'm interviewing somebody, but I would just on my hand and I'd be like, dude, and he'd be like, ooh, okay, I'm getting another one, right? And he was looking for ways that he could be stellar. Isn't that what we all want for our kids? Token economy. I'm telling you, it works in lots of different circumstances in lots of different ways. But it's a way of giving the reinforcer that, like, that, that is just something little so that they know that they're getting a paycheck down the road. Use your token economy. Think, how can I do that in a situation that's making it hard? And I'm telling you, 
it's a good thing. Okay, moving on. We always have a question of the day. Our question today, see, I'm excited because we've got amazing guests today. Our question today is, who do you go to for advice? Who are the people that you listen to? Who are the people that you run to when you're not sure? Because let me just tell you something. When your child is diagnosed with autism, it's going to change. It's going to change. Um, and I think it's really important that we, we notice because a lot of times people have this frustration in the beginning, you go to your best girlfriend and you go to your mom and you go, I don't know what to do. You know, my child was just diagnosed with autism. They're telling me he needs 40 hours of therapy. And what's the first thing that they're going to say? What? I mean, this is the first thing I said when my child was diagnosed. 40 hours of therapy for a three-year-old? Are you out of your mind? That's a full-time job. There's no way. He needs a nap. That can't happen, right? And, and I said that. And then when my friend said it and my mom said it, I was like, right, right. Okay, we have agreement. The three of us, the people who I respect, we agree that that's full-on crazy. Except it's not. Except it's not, and we're not experts in, none of the three of us were experts in ABA or autism, and none of us had met an individual with autism who was working a job, right? And what my husband and I found was, I was just telling this story to somebody yesterday on the phone that early on, and we really we were like, uh, on this 40-hour thing, but we'd heard from one parent whose kid was doing amazing, you better pay attention to that. And we were like, oh, okay, because your kid's pretty fabulous, so I think we got to pay attention. But then Bonnie Yates, the amazing Bonnie Yates, uh, I didn't even know her then, but she invited, uh, you know, everybody in the Los Angeles area. She was having an event where she had a panel of, I think it was 10 or 12 parents whose kids were all doing really well. And they would speak about what they had done, and then you could ask them questions afterward. And I listened to those 10 people, and they were like, we did ABA, and we did it intensively. And by the way, we made sure our child got healthy, and my child needed this, and my child, and they were all different, but the thing in common we did intensive ABA, and, my, and this is where my this is which college my child's going to now. And my husband and I, we had our kid in the little umbrella stroller. That's how Lily was, and we looked at each other and we were like, "Okay, we're on that, right?" Because and we started asking advice of those people, of those people, um, because I love my mother, still love her. My mother's no longer with us, but she did not have a basis to give me advice on this, right? Nor did my best friend. You got to be careful who who's telling you what, because if they don't know, and then they'll feel bad later on, and you'll feel bad. Why was I listening to you? You're not an expert in that. Um, you've never experienced that, so why was I asking you? Because you're you're close friends. Which brings me to my next thing, which is what our topic is this week, and that is I didn't really give uh, Traven any, any any kind of thing, but our topic this week is your inner circle. Who, who is in your inner circle? And, and I'm going to tell you this, your inner circle is going to change. Uh, it doesn't mean it's going to change permanently, but it might. Um, but the people that you let in and go, this is what's happening and I don't know what to do yet, is likely going to change once you get an autism diagnosis. Um, it, it doesn't mean you have to kick everybody out, right? But I had the, the litmus test, are you helping us to get where we need to be or are you some way hindering us? And man, for the people who were hindering us, I was like, lights on, nobody home. I, I didn't even, I, I mean, I didn't even bother going, hey, I'm, you know, excommunicating you from our lives. Because I, I didn't think I was. I just was like, I have no time for that. If you're getting in the way of what we need to do to help our son, I, I'm not even going to address it. I'm just going to go over here. Uh, and there were a lot of people in our lives that were not happy about that. You know what? I stand by it. My kid's doing well. Um, you you got to be with people who are going to get behind what you're doing and support you and that have an understanding and want to learn, or, or you have to ask them to step to the side. This is too hard, um, and it, there's too much at stake. If you're trying to truly, truly help yourself and help your child, you can't have naysayers in the middle of your life, wacka, 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 wacka in your ear. I said to my mother, I, I, you know, I, I either need your support or your silence. Please pick. And she was ticked by that. <laughs> she was like, what? Uh, and I said, Mom, that's all I have the bandwidth for. And it took her a little while, but she got on the support bandwagon. And that meant the world to me um, for the time that she was left on this planet. And, and we were closer for it, right? Don't be afraid to tell people. Support or silence. Um, there were other people that I did not invest in to even have that conversation. I just saw that there was no support. And I went, 
over here. <laughs> I'm not attending to this over here. Uh, I encourage you, it's very freeing because you can't do the hard stuff if you're trying to carry people along and explain it to them endlessly, endlessly. Explain once, twice, three times, but then it's like, no, if you're trying to harm what we're, to harm, and you will see that people can, I don't have time, I don't have time, right? Uh, choose your inner circle widely, wisely and widely um, so that you've got more than one person, okay? All right, we've got, one of my inner circle is going to be with us today. Isn't that amazing? Coming up, we're, for the first time, we're going to have Mirelle Beauchenu. Let's hope I didn't slaughter that. Uh, clinical psychologist, we're talking internationally this morning with him. And then one of my inner circle, Joanne Lara and John Brower, who I just barely have met from New Horizons. But Joanne Lara, you guys should know, she's from Autism Works Now, Autism Movement Therapy, um, Glorious Pies, and one of my dearest friends. So, uh, and I only met her four years ago, um, so, but she's part of my inner circle now. Uh, she's good people. All right, you guys, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back talking internationally with a clinical psychologist. Stick with us. Hey, I'm Candace Cameron Bray. Tom Bergeron. You're watching Autism Live. And you're watching Autism Live. And you're watching Autism Live. And you're watching Autism Live. Do you provide care services to someone with autism? Recently, more and more children are being diagnosed with the condition and getting the support they need as awareness grows. But what happens to these children as they grow up? It's estimated that over half a million youth with autism will turn 18 in the next decade, and they'll be faced with a very difficult reality. As children with autism grow up, their services start to disappear or become very difficult to access. Things like medical care, mental health counseling, vocational training, and more. All services that are still desperately needed. The loss of support that youth with autism face as they grow up is so severe that it's referred to in the autism community as falling off a cliff. Adults with autism need the same level of support they had as children to avoid falling off the services cliff. Introducing Skills Living the web-based software designed specifically to help transitioning youth and adults with autism so they can avoid the cliff and instead fly to success. With Skills Living, help your learner with autism develop the skills they need in all the critical areas of adult life, including self-control, planning, and problem solving, effective communication, performing life skill tasks for independent living, acquiring and maintaining employment or other meaningful activities, developing and maintaining social skills and relationships, accessing transportation and public services, and being safe. Skills Living includes a comprehensive assessment, a data collection mobile app, behavior intervention plan builder, and automatic progress reporting. It also provides a complete curriculum addressing 16 key areas spanning the entire range of functioning adulthood. Skills Living is easy to use and can be implemented by schools, parents, and autism service providers. Call or click today for your free demo and see how Skills Living can help your learner with autism avoid the cliff and instead reach their fullest potential. Skills Living. Wish. Learn. Become. for some cheap festive napkins for your next party with your kids? Look no further. We're going to be making some hand dyed paper napkins. While we make this fun activity, you'll notice that these icons will pop up. These icons will be important information about the skill and where to find it on the skills program. Skills is an ABA based online tool that helps parents create curriculum to help teach their children on the autism spectrum. And if you're already a skills user, this will ensure that you get the most out of this fun activity with your child. Well, let's get started. The materials you'll be needing are paper towels, food coloring, water, a bowl, and rubber bands. Step one, you're going to take your paper towel and you're going to fold it symmetrically into a shape. This is a chance to be creative to see how repeating patterns are going to be made. Once your paper towels have been folded into different types of shapes and patterns, you're going to take your rubber band and you're going to use that to secure it in place. These are my folded up napkins. Now that they're ready, I'm going to take my water and mix it up with the food coloring and submerge the napkins in it. Once they've been submerged with the food coloring, I'm going to take it out and lay it flat to dry. 
if you leave it in the water too long, they're gonna completely disintegrate. So just leave them in for just a moment. I've been very patient and here is my finished pattern napkin. Well, I hope you enjoyed this activity with me today. Until next time guys, craft on. Bye. To find more about skills and to access all of the lessons you saw in today's Smarty, visit skillsforautism.com and click on the parent icon, Skills, the online autism solution. Say how do we say hi? Let's get wild, let's get wild, let's get, let's get, 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 let's get wild. Hi, welcome back to Autism Live. I'm Lisa Ackerman. I've got Kristen Selby Gonzalez here with me today. And the feedback, overwhelmingly, oh, chicken nuggets! Probably one of the easiest recipes on the planet. Uh, we know all of our kids love chicken nuggets. <laughs> oh, let's talk about corn. GMOs, uh, genetically modified foods, are no bueno for a lot of folks, and we agree. So um, I've actually called the manufacturers to make sure these are GMO-free product. Really simply, what I did with the um, the cornflakes is just the old-fashioned crush away. Um, that's just the easiest way. Maybe you can crush that a little well, bit for me. our kids can help us with. Yeah. Too, doing cooking with them. Well, and fine motor yeah, improvement. Absolutely. Boom. The sensory <laughs> issues. Boom. A lot of people will over-season. Uh, they season for adults. So from the standpoint of just putting it in enough flavor. Now that we got our. Uh, base or coating and I'm going to work on how we coat the chicken. Now, Kristen, was Jax ever allergic to eggs? He has been. There's a lot of options with eggs. Don't you know that you can also look at duck eggs, really? quail eggs, and other types of eggs that even though they look the same in the bowl, they're different on the allergy panel. Let's say you find out you're allergic to every egg on the planet. You can use a little bit of water and arrowroot starch. I've got a, a high grade stainless steel, non Teflon frying pan. I'm using high heat oil, getting all ready to go. So we're just really easily going in and coating the chicken. Now, when I'm flipping these, Lisa, um, do I flip over and over or do I just cook one side and then the other? You know, I prefer to cook one side because what happens is the good coating that you spent all this time crushing oh. for me falls off. Gotcha. Bonus. About how long um, do you cook on each side? About four minutes on each side okay. will do it. And okay. I think you're almost there. Yeah, you're good. That you're golden. Good. Fantastic. So if you want to take them out. So now that we got the last batch in, let me take you through what these finished babies look like. Like I said, you're going to have some happy families um, out there wanting to eat this. This is so easy. You saw how quickly we got in and done. Just want to remind everyone we really want feedback at Autism Live and want to know what you want to see next. So if you've got an idea, a recipe you want us to convert um, or to talk about a particular topic, we'd love to hear from you. You could do that at autismlive at gmail.com or Facebook land. We're all on Facebook, facebook.com slash autismlive. And then again, there's already thousands of recipes waiting for your eyeballs to go cruise over on the TACA website. We'll look forward to seeing you next time on Autism Live. Thanks for joining us. Welcome back, you guys. We had promised you a clinical psychologist who was coming to us from Bucharest, Romania. And international Skype is not my friend today, nor is WhatsApp. Uh, we had a plan, and we had a plan B, and both have failed. I just want to say that our guest was ready to go, and we really thank him and our apologies to him that we're having to reschedule. And let me just say this. Uh, international uh, uh, Clinical psychologist uh, from Bucharest, Romania, and he was going to talk to us about a wide variety of things, but he himself has, direct, uh, has developed an uh, augmentative uh, communication app that you can use to help nonverbal children or adults express their needs and learn to communicate. And the key differences from other apps is that it's very simple to use, very intuitive, affordable, fully customizable, and it has multilingual support. So the app is called Talk Wishes, um, and I believe that you can get that on uh, Google Play and um, you know in the App Store. Uh, please check it out, but we will have him back on the show on a different day, and our apologies to him 
that um, International Skype is not my friend today. All right, we are going to, I'm sorry, we're going to take another short break because we're going to welcome Joanne Lara and John Brower, who is coming to us from New Horizons. Joanne, of course, is coming to us from Autism Works Now, Autism Movement Therapy, and Glorious Pies. They're going to, they're here, so they're going to be back with us in the studio in just a few minutes after this message. Stick with us. Hi guys, welcome back to Smarty. It's February and for this month we have made a template for you. You can find it on facebook.com slash autism live and this activity works on your child's pincer grasp. So let's get started. The materials you'll be needing are scissors, a hole puncher, a glue stick, shoelace, cardstock, and our template that you can print from facebook.com slash autism live. First, I'm going to take my template and glue it to cardstock. And the reason I'm using a glue stick is so that it doesn't ripple, because if you use the wet glue, it's going to make it all lumpy. Once I have my template glued to my cardstock, I'm going to take my scissors and cut out the heart. Now that I have my heart cut out, I'm going to cut out the holes with the hole puncher. This is where your child's going to take their shoelace and start threading through it. Now that I have put all the hole punches through the template, now I'm going to get my kiddo to come over and take the shoelace and start sewing the outside of the heart. Shoelaces are great because they have the tip already making it easier for the child to thread it through the holes and they come in great different colors and patterns. As you can see, we found some really festive hearts. Here's my completed Valentine. Now it makes sense, right? I love you so very much. <laughs> as you can see, your child has a lot of opportunity to work on their pincer grass and find mold as they sew around the heart. Well, I hope you enjoyed doing this with your child. Until next time, craft on guys. Bye. Can you see me flying by your side? Parent to parent, having a compliant child is one of the greatest things on earth. But frequently we ask ourselves, why doesn't my child listen? Well, here are some tips to help us to get a listening, happy, compliant child. First, we want to make sure that we make compliance worthwhile. Whenever your child does something that's compliant, make sure that you praise them and heap rewards on them that are meaningful to them, things they really want. One of the things that we have to be mindful of is that if the child isn't compliant, we have to praise more often. Just keep it on. If, you're, if you say to yourself, there's nothing to praise, they're not doing anything that I want them to do, then ask them to do something that they already want to do. This is a really tricky way of being able to praise them. And then, of course, the last thing that we want to do is catch them doing good things when they least suspect it and make sure you keep that praise on because having a compliant child is one of the best things in life. Token economies are a great way to get to good behavior with your child. This is Logan Shepard. At first glance, he looks like a typical American teenager. He plays in a band, loves hanging out with his friends, he doesn't like doing homework, and he's not really fond of broccoli. But Logan Shepard is not your typical 14-year-old. Logan was diagnosed with autism at the age of two. He was nonverbal, made no eye contact, and his parents were told to abandon all hope. Instead, his parents began an intensive intervention treatment. At its center was a quality ABA program known as the CARD method. This is Logan Shepard now. All I really want to say is like, I'm kind of copying Martin Luther King. I kind of have a dream like that one day, like I can just like inspire people and never give up. Cause like that's what I want to do in life. Cause if I can succeed, they can succeed and I will succeed. To 
follow Logan's musical journey, visit www.facebook.com slash official drummer rock or at drummer rock on Instagram. For more information on the card method, visit www.centerforautism.com or call 800-345-CARD. Rock on, Logan. Welcome back to Autism Live. How lucky am I? I am joined live in the studio right now with one of our, one of our topics this week is inner circle. And I said that Joanne Lara is a very much a part of my inner circle. She's joining us. You guys know her. She's a semi-regular on the show from Autism Works Now, Autism Movement Therapy, and Glorious Pies. But she's brought a friend, a remarkable friend, John Brower, is joining us from New Horizons. And welcome to the show for the first time. Thank you so much. How about if we start with what is New Horizons and, and what happens there? And okay. what do you do there? Uh, people still wonder what I do there. Okay. But <laughs> All right. Let's so, clarify. Right. Exactly. So I've been there for about two years. Mm -hmm. And so uh, New Horizons is a nonprofit organization serving about 1,500 uh, individuals with ID and DD primarily is our, our target population per year. Um, but it's also, you know, we've got a much broader spectrum than that, and part of what we're hoping to do over the years to come is to broaden that even more to include more folks on the autism spectrum. Wonderful. But we serve, uh, let's see, we have um, a community day program that has about 300 people in it, and those folks are primarily in the community. It's volunteer jobs. It's um, taking knitting classes. It's everything you can think of that you would want to do in your life. Um, and then we have 13 uh, group homes. So six unit group homes that are all spread out throughout the community. Um, we have an employment services division that's huge. We have 400 people right now working in the community. At Albertsons? At, at, you name it, they're working there. 400 people yeah. working. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Getting a paycheck. I know that gets you excited, oh, Joanne. <laughs> it makes me so happy. It's fantastic. Well, yeah, it and in fantastic. terms of kind of who we're serving, we're one of the largest providers, and our goal the next couple of years is to be the largest provider in California. There's no reason we can't double that number. Love that. We have so many people who want jobs, and we have so many employers that are looking for folks. And if people are interested in knowing more, where should they go to find out more information, John? Probably our website, which is www.nwnewhorizons-sfv.org. Okay. Yeah. The SFV standing for San, San Fernando, Fernando Valley. Valley. That's okay. right. Although we do spread, we're now beyond some of that area, but yeah. that is the primary. Yep. Okay. And, and John, you said that you've been there for two years, right. but you've had an illustrious career leading up to that that prepared you for all that. Tell us a little bit about what, what, where you came from. Okay. Well, it's kind of a crazy journey. So I, um, I owned a construction company for many years. Before that, I owned a dental lab. I worked in the food service industry for actually during part of that as well. And eventually I decided I was what, what I was doing wasn't fulfilling, so I went back and got my master's degree. And part of when you get your clinical um, master's, at least at, at JFK University, is you do two nine-month internships. So I said, I will do anything. I will go anywhere as long as it's close to home because I was commuting like a crazy man. I lived in the Bay Area. And so they found me a spot working with folks with disabilities, didn't know a thing about it. The universe said, I have plans for you, John. Honestly. I, <laughs> That's well, what happened. <laughs> and I even said in the interview, I said, you know, I really have not worked with somebody with a disability this way. Do you think I'm going to fit in? And they said, just, just try it. See what, yeah. So they said, you won't be alone. We'll train you. The first day I showed up, no trainers were there. I was all on my own. And I thought, <laughs> what was I so worried about? This is great. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. So I came probably, and after the first two weeks, came home and told my wife, I found my calling. This right. is what I want to do. Yeah. So I was very fortunate. I graduated, got my master's degree, and then was offered uh, a job in San Francisco starting a nonprofit from scratch because they had a lot of people with disabilities that could get a job but couldn't keep a job. So their thing was, well, how are you going to do that? Help solve that problem, right? Yeah. So to do that, because I, I'm an entrepreneur, I love the whole business model and, and you know, try to take things apart and figure out how to make it work. Um, we started six businesses that employed 300 people at any one time in the community. We had we delivered all the mail for the city and county of San Francisco. We had two retail stores. We had two cafes. Um, we had a janitorial service that was in four counties. It, it was just it was fabulous. It was everything an entrepreneur could dream of, and to see people really do well. And now, mind you, I'm I'm an older guy, so this was a long time ago. This was almost who, 30 who are years you ago. Talking right. To you? <laughs> 
<laughs> Who are you talking right. to here? Because <laughs> like, Joanne and I are only 14 if you I, add us right. together. Exactly. Right. Just, yes. just in your prime. I see it. I see yes. it. So you see, yes. Shannon. There's a lot of snow on the room. You see well, that's the thing. God brought us together. Yeah. I mean, uh, if you know Joanne and like, you know the topics that she comes in here and talks about, you know that this is all passion, very right? exciting yeah. to her. Yeah. Your resume uh, probably had the top of your head come off. Uh, I mean, just the fact that he did the Firefly Cafe and catering. Right. If you look that up, yeah, you see that it is exactly the model that I want for Glorious Pies, which is front of the house, back of the house, taking the orders, serving the food, everything. And it's up and running for five years. And, and what I love about Firefly was it was the last project I started before I left Virginia. What I loved about it was it wasn't a disability cafe. You didn't. There was no signage. There was. We just happened to have people with disabilities working there, and they yeah. worked every part of it. And the best part of it was I, I'd really hoped that it would do well financially. It, it broke even at the six-month mark, which for wow. food service is That's crazy. Amazing. Yeah. Um, because we had so much support from the community. They wanted us to do well, which is great. I love that people got trained. I love that, you know, that it was real, real jobs and all that. My favorite part of this, though, is that people graduated. Let's say you're in dishwashing or food prep or whatever, cashiering, that the restaurants in our area said, we'll hire anybody that graduates. Yeah. And so for a change, our clients had first right of refusal. They would go and say, I'm interviewing at three restaurants and I'm going to choose which one I want to work at. Wow. Now, when do our folks get that kind of, like, and they would say, well, this one's closer, this one pays a little bit more, I thought the manager was friendlier here, and that's how they would get their job. And so that's really then about creating something where it really is client choice then, right? Wow. So we, we now have to bring it all together and talk about Joanne, but let's take a quick break. Okay. Um, and then when we come back, we're going to see how this all fits together with the work that Joanne's been doing. You know, Joanne uh, uh, co-authored this amazing book, Teaching Pre-Employment Skills to 14 to 17 year olds. And, and it, it's a little bit of a misnomer because it's yeah. teaching pre-employment skills to anybody who needs to Everyone. learn them, there right? Which is everybody. That's right. Right? So, um, and, uh, but the subtitle is the autism works now method. method yeah. So we're going to come back and talk about how, uh, I love how there's a little bit of green on your book. So can you see how it, the green <laughs> screen cuts that out? Uh, yes, I get distracted squirrel. Um, oh. But uh, we're going to come back and talk about how John and Joanne are now, uh, you know, plotting. They're plotting. Right. <laughs> They're plotting, yeah. and, and, we, and we're excited about them plotting because yeah. yeah. good things happen when good people plot. So stick with us. We'll be right back after these messages. Hi, Lisa Ackerman back with Talk of Facts. Questions, real life questions, and answers for the autism journey. Oh, are you ready for this one? Talk to me about puberty. Ah! So what I would recommend is first and foremost is the kids that have done the therapeutics, the medical, and the dietary allergen removal interventions tend to have an easier time at puberty. Seizures are really common uh, for children on the spectrum more than neurotypical populations, and they're especially most common right at or about puberty time. So it's extremely important, even if you have a 10-year-old that you've already done an EEG, that you consider before they go through puberty to get a second EEG done. Just because you have one clean EEG with no abnormal brain activity or seizure activity, you need to do another one prior to puberty. That's one of the most common calls we get with teens on the spectrum is they are often experiencing a seizure for what their family thinks is the first time. And the third thing is you're going to have a teenager, so you're really going to have to kick it up a notch on those life skills, social skills, and getting your kid ready to be that teenager they need to be. So if you're doing that baby thing, and I know you are, where you're maybe making their lunches or uh, helping them with laundry, we need to start bouncing some chores over to those kids. And we also need to increase social environments where they can be successful. So think about it. We've got three really important things that we need to look at. Puberty is a very serious issue, and we take it very seriously. So make sure you have all of your therapeutics, medical, and dietary interventions in place. Uh, consider to do another 24-hour EEG with your physician prior to puberty. And the third most important thing, get ready to raise the bar. Your job is to really get them ready for life. And I know you can do it. 
Welcome back to Autism Live. In the studio with us right now, Joanne Lara, who is co-author of this amazing book, Teaching Pre-Employment Skills to 14 to 17 year olds. This is the Autism Works Now method. We were saying before, it's a misnomer. It's teaching pre-employment skills to anybody who needs to learn them at any age, right. wherever they are Absolutely. of any ability. Yes. Um, so Joanne is here. She is the founder of Autism Works Now and Autism Movement Therapy and Glorious Pies. You're such a slouch. You're, you're not busy doing anything. And uh, she brought to us today for the first time John Brower uh, from New Horizons. We just heard from John a little bit about what New Horizons does and what his area of expertise, uh, but many areas, areas of expertise. Oh, yeah. uh, and we were saying that probably that you know, made your head explode because it's an arena of things that you're interested in. So tell us about how you and John are plotting. Well, we've already plotted for one thing because Autism Works Now, the program is at New Horizons right. on mm -hmm. Thursdays from 6.30 to 8.30. It's the same program that's been up and running for five years mm -hmm. and um, we're, still, we're, we're still doing great. Now those are the individuals who take the Autism Works Now program that are the employees for Glorious Pies, yes. which is the catering company. So they learn every in this class and all the things that are in this book, they learn all those things, everything from how to set up an email account to how to how apply to for a job, how to dress, how to interview. What do you do after you have the job, big one? Yeah. In fact, we had an individual who came, just have to tell a side story, last, last week. He goes out a lot, he interviews a lot, hasn't had any success in, in getting a... Uh, employment yet and I said well are you s remembering to send that thank you note yeah uh, no I just thank them there no 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 there is a protocol to getting a job yeah these guys have missed the boat on it haven't gotten it in their public school system you know how I'm gonna yeah. get on the soapbox no, no. They're not teaching it in the, <laughs> they're not teaching in the public school system they're not teaching in the transition programs they're not you know, they're, they're goodbye, don't let the door hit you, and good luck with that job. Yeah. And don't have an email. Yeah. Can't have a job without an email, come yeah. on. Uh, don't have an email, don't know Google Docs. Everyone uses Google mm -hmm. Docs. That's yeah. like the platform. I sort of need to take this class. Yeah, you need to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't need a job, but I sort of need to take this class. I mean, look, I, I know people who have taken their kids there to take the class, and they find themselves going, does yeah. anybody have a pen? I'd yeah. like to write this Yeah, down. they take notes. Um, yeah, That's awesome. exactly. And right. can I just say that the field trips that you guys go on, Yeah. <laughs> no, like, we, you should charge a ticket price for people to come along with because you went to YouTube a couple and of weeks Google ago on the 27th and, and I was like well, how do I get to go on that field trip thank you very much and it was fantastic so they you go some pretty yeah. impressive places we let's do. just say it's, we do it's in like five the, years yeah it's the hit parade of where you'd want to go yeah. so all of this that they get if they're taking the class locally right but we should say that you are prepared and your co-author Susan Osborne, you guys are prepared that if there's a place that wants to bring it, they can write to you and you will bring, train them in it and then they can run their program. One day, Pittsburgh. five hour. Pittsburgh, you want it, you can have it. They'll come, they'll train you, then you run it. We so did it in Boston, that. Seattle, and here, and we've been very successful. Yeah. So if you do want to have the program, replicate the program, and you're a nonprofit, you don't have to be a nonprofit, but most of the, yeah. well, they've all been nonprofits that have asked us to come. Um, and do our five-hour uh, Autism Works Now training. Uh, we'll help you replicate the program, and we'll also stand by you for a and help you with some kind of an employment that you want to be a sister employment with it. Yeah. Some people because don't want to do catering. Because that's know? what you discovered is that they were ready, but that then you were hoping people would take them for internships, and we found, because I was there with you alongside you on a couple of these things, we found that some of the people are talking out of both sides of their face and saying, we hire people, and then they don't. Oh, yeah. Um, because Should I they name them? Well, no. no. Let's, let's try to play nice. Uh, let's try to play nice. Because I'm still trying to get them to, right. yeah. you know. Come to I know, the table. I know, yeah. I know, I know. Um, You're right. But, um, but so you said rather than keep fighting City Hall, so to speak, right. um, that you were just going to take matters into your own hand and you were going to start a business Two years that ago. would be the interim place, like what you did mm -hmm. with the Fireflies, so that then they could, they would be ready right. for the job someplace else. Right. So you started right. Glorious Pies. Right. So saying it's not, it's not the uh, last job you have, 
it's the first job you have. That's right. For most of our individuals, the first job with a paycheck, with a 1099, with a W-2, oh. a real, uh, open the bank account, have the ATM right. card. That's what we're teaching. Yeah. That skill set. And, the, the and can we talk about the first column when, oh. you know, I got one of, I don't know if I told you, but one of our Autism Works Now candidates, beginning of a glorious pies, um, paychecks went out. I'm like, Colin hasn't cashed his paycheck yet. You know, what's going on with that? Because almost everybody else had run to the bank, right? right? They were so excited. Right. Excited. Right. I mean, Getting, come on. Because yeah. they're holding it. And, and my ADP payroll even said to me, because they're on payroll, listen, it'd be a little cheaper for you if we just did direct deposit. Right. Mm -hmm. No, no, you I want, want them it to in the mail. It. Yeah. They get it, sign the back, take it there. I want them to understand the process yeah. Yeah. of a paycheck. Yeah. Don't want a direct deposit. Their money has been being direct deposited since they were three years old. Yeah, and they got to feel the, tra the transaction no, connected. And they have no yeah. concept of employment yeah. because of that. Yeah. So, uh, Colin, well, I got a piece of paper from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hold on, Jay. Uh, um, Says glorious pies on it. Yeah. I said, Colin, yeah. that's your paycheck. Yeah. Never seen a paycheck. Twenty six years old. Bless his heart. Mm -hmm. And and but and I, I, I have seen the growth of so many of your. Now um, he's like, when are we working? Right. Yeah. What's when, the next job? Yeah. Because he wants to buy something and he gets the yeah, connection. Gets now. the connection. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So now, what's happening? What are you plotting, the two of you? What are you working on? Well, I kind of think of it as uh, we're dating. So oh. we're, we're we okay. we expect to walk down the aisle together. But at this <laughs> right. point, we're trying to figure out where the where the connections are. And quite frankly, to have. <laughs> You know, Joanne is somebody who would be a leader to come in and work with us yeah. as we're trying to expand into this population. Again, I think we're doing so well in employment. Can't we just use this overlay to work with the folks she's already working with? It makes yeah. perfect sense. We've got a space. She's got an expertise. I just think this is, uh, it was meant to be. It was meant to be. This is, yeah. a, this is a beautiful relationship. We hope it comes to fruition and you have babies, let's say right. that. Right. That's right. Right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. That you have lots and lots of That's babies. That's right. That's right. Because you know, we, we've seen it time and time again that, you know, the autism community, we all say we want to rah-rah each other, but a right. lot of times people are working in their own lane where when we can really work together collaboratively, that's, right. that's when things go um, So I applaud the two of you that you're even looking at that and seeing what, what benefits, but I love that now your program is being taught there at New Horizons. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful thing that that is. And Love we're, that. we're going to look forward. Now, you've got an event coming up, though, correct? We do. So May 2nd is our big gala. It's the part of what we love about, you know, some of the fundraising events we do is that the money is not tied to things. And what, what I love about money that isn't tied to things is that a lot of times it'll say, well, you can do this with these three people, but not four and five. Mm. If you're going to do individualized services, you have to take that, that you know, veil off. And so fundraising, so in this event, this is our gala, it brings in several hundred thousand dollars and allows us the flexibility. It all goes directly back to the clients. Wonderful. And it allows us then to have that flexibility and say, okay, so let's say Department of Rehab will give you six weeks of, I'm making this up, but six weeks of um, employment services, job coaching, and we think you need 20 weeks. Mm -hmm. Then you get 20 weeks. Wow. If that's what it's going to take to get you to keep the job and feel like this is your place, that's what we do. Okay, so yeah. what is the fundraiser? So it's a it's a gala event. It's at the Avalon. It's okay. going to be so much fun. We have, I can't tell you all the details yet because we're working on a couple of really okay. fun With perks. With a big celebrity. Yeah, I can't say who yet, but can't it's say, but but, big but, but lots of fun things. And I tell you, it's heartwarming because you get to meet some of the clients, hear their stories. Um, it's just there's just it's a love in is what it is. Okay. Yeah. So at the we're, Avalon. At the Avalon. Now right. you said everybody knows the Avalon. I love the I Avalon. Don't know the Avalon. Well, so I've been in Hollywood Avalon. 35 years and used to live in Hollywood, and that's where all the rock and rollers used to play. Okay. So uh, we used to beat a fast path to the Avalon, mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful old, like I think, okay. vaudevillian theater. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's cool. so gorgeous. You've been yeah. in. Yeah, I, it's absolutely yeah. It's fantastic. All right. Where do we get tickets? Uh, so you can go on our website. You can give us a call. You can stop by the office. Come. If you want to find me, I will get you a ticket. Okay. <laughs> Tell them what the website is again. Okay, so www.newhorizons-sfv, for San Fernando Valley, .org. Okay. And it's all up there. And you can also, we didn't get to any of the programs. and We have some pretty amazing new things happening that yeah. um, I would love for people to take a look at. We have a program, for example, I'll just tell you the short version, which is called Go Grocery. We've built a mock grocery store on our site. It. It's a partnership with Albertsons and Vons and Safeway, and everybody who graduates will work for one of the stores, 25 stores in our and area, do. and it's working great. So yeah. uh, there's just so many great things happening. I would love for folks to come on campus, come take a tour. 
Um, we, at one point, we have a seven-acre campus. It was just filled with people. All those folks are in the community now. Yeah. So we're now we're trying to reinvent ourselves and have partners like Joanne. And, That's a pretty and, fabulous and, yeah. thing. And Joanne's a fabulous partner to Absolutely. have. Joanne, we didn't talk about where can you get the book. On uh, our website, which is uh, www.autismmovementtherapy.org is my store. Okay. But you can also go to autismworksnow.org. You can get to it all in either place. Mm -hmm. Autismworksnow.org or autismmovementtherapy.org. It's also on Amazon. It's, it's a Jessica it's every, Kingsley book. So it's, it's everywhere in their you catalog. Can get books. Yeah. So uh, a pretty fabulous thing. And I just want to point out, because we've had you on the show before to talk about this, but if yeah. somebody's watching for the first time, all the worksheets, all the forms. A hundred worksheets all that can be reproduced. All the things that you, you know, it's, it's all here for you. There's it, a website there that you go to and you can, if you're a teacher or someone that's conducting the program, uh, in your community and you can download all the materials you need for that lesson there's 36 lessons yeah so it's it's really Amazing. all here yeah. this is the there's curriculum yeah. um, to be able to teach this yeah. an enterprising person could take this and, and do this with their kiddo That's right. um, but even better to do it with a group of people because I think they learn from each other you you you've really got this down pat the friends that the, that the these individuals has have made over the course of the five years they now go outside of our course and meet and go for dinners and nice. go to the mall and right. go you know their friends awesome. yeah and i always say it's all about the friendship it is, mm -hmm. it is. that nice. should be number one for your child yeah does your child have friends Yes, that's it. quality of life. And and we should note, I don't think I've ever mentioned it before, but the foreword for this Temple, yeah. Dr. Temple Grandin. Yeah. Um that's, you know, no small no small no. thing. Right. No. Um okay. And so while we're talking about this, is it too late for if somebody is, has a candidate because that's what you call your students or candidates because yeah. they're job candidates. That's right. Um is it too late because you've already started your semester would they have to wait Till no, the, they can come in. We come have in. two new candidates that are coming in. I have a new individual coming tonight. Okay. And we had a, a, a candidate last week who came. Okay. Um, so this it, yeah. this actually happens on Thursday nights. Mm -hmm. So um, and it happens at the New Horizon That's facility. Right. The address That's right. is one uh, one five seven two five Parthenia. Okay. Uh, in North Hills. Got it. Yeah. Um, and so Haskell they would go Cross to... Street, so Haskell Correct. Parthenia. Okay. Right near the Budweiser. See, this is why I have you. I need help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I have to break it down. John, we all do. Every <laughs> single one of us. I'm breaking it down. Right. I want to make it easy for people to get there. Awesome. Right. Uh, um, yeah. So uh, people can go to autismworksnow.org yes. and get the phone number or, you know, call you. Call me. Call yeah. you or write you to, to be able to register to do that. Absolutely. Uh, and can they come to just take one class they to do. see if... Yeah. I let everyone come and audit and okay. just sit and, you know what? It's not for everyone. Right. It, it may not be for your child, but let them see. And I'm happy for anyone to come and the parent can come and, and be part of it and, yeah. and watch. We typically don't have parents. It's not a, a it's not a model where the parent sits next to the child. No, I want to be very clear about that. You drop them off and you go get your nails done or yeah. go mm -hmm. see a movie or That's whatever right, or it is go that to you dinner. do. Yeah. Although parents want to because it's pretty oh, informative. It it's, is informative you know. and, and I love that piece. And a lot of times the parents will go to the field trips with us too yes. because they love that. Yeah. And, well, um, they should. They're great field trips. Right. I'm telling right. you. I want to go. Should, right? Right. right. You right. should sell a side ticket as a fundraiser. I, that'd be a good idea. We're going right? to Google on the 27th. Stop. So we have YouTube and then Google. It's like, it's amazing. Yeah. You can't get into Sony those places. And, I know. Uh, you know. I know. Uh, stop. Susan's it's fantastic good. with that. Yeah. No, that's yeah. a really fabulous She's thing. She's great. So, um, and, and I also don't want to miss the opportunity to say, if you have an event that's coming up in the Los Angeles area, uh, and you can travel a little outside of Los Angeles. We do. But not Glorious too Pies. Yeah. If you have an event that's coming up and you would be willing and would love to have the the, the pie truck yeah, come. come and they set up a tent and they sell pies, um, it's a wonderful way to say to the world, we're putting our efforts where our mouths are. Uh, it helps them to sustain themselves, gives them the work opportunity. You go to places all over, businesses all over, and it's a wonderful thing. Talk just for a minute about that. Good. So we, we had a wonderful um, um, uh, organization, Guess, like as in Guess Jeans, mm -hmm. um, said, we want you to come. I love this. And we'd like, we're, we're buying all the desserts mm -hmm. for our employees. And is all you're doing is serving them. Yeah. Uh, for 400. 
Yeah. Well, that was a big day for yeah, Gloria's mom. It was right. a nice right. chat. Right. Was a nice, and a nice exactly. opportunity to work. Right. Autism Speaks, the same thing, when they did their gala at the bowling. Mm -hmm. Please come, and we, we were buying all the desserts for right. everyone at the gala. But Another you can nice, do it the other way, too, you where you bring the, the truck way. and they pay individually. That's what we're doing for Watt Plaza, mm -hmm. and we'll be there on Valentine's Day okay. from uh, 11 to 2. We'll be at Fox Plaza, which is on the corner of the Fox lot. Mm -hmm. They love us. We're coming back there on Thursday the 13th from 11.30 to 2.30. Okay. And we're just selling. And everyone that works in the in these big, tall, high-rise buildings comes down and mm -hmm. gets a dessert and coffee. Mm -hmm. And we love it. It's a yeah. fabulous thing. And then last but not least, Autism Movement Therapy, which this is something, how long have you been doing that? 11 years. 11 years. Yeah. If you have a kiddo of any age in the Los Angeles area, mm -hmm. I think it's definitely something that you need to audit. I've seen Joanne's class. It's amazing. Um, we talk on the show a lot about giving your kids an opportunity to do other things that are enrichment, right? Yeah. Um, but there's also this thing that we talk about about crossing the midline. There's nobody who understands more about how the brain works and how that translates for kiddos and adults and mm -hmm. teens on the autism spectrum than this woman, right? And, and attaching it to the body and getting the body to talk to the brain. Uh, I've seen what she does in her class and it's absolutely amazing. Can't say enough about how you should treat yourself and your child to go and do that. And the parent could do it with them. Absolutely. All, all, although they could just drop off or they can sit and watch. Or they sit in the back. It's a fabulous thing to watch. Yes. To, her, to watch her work is an amazing, life-changing thing. Um, but that's, that's all, you can only get Joanne if you're in the Los Angeles area, but you have people that you have certified to do this method Over around thousand, the world. Yeah, over a thousand Around certified. the world. So if you look, if, if you look in your area for somebody who's doing autism movement therapy, and if you can't find it, talk to Joanne. If you want to get certified, the certifications, you don't, do you have another one? I never, year? London? March, yeah, 21 well, and 22. If you can get to London, London and there are people in London, right. oh, no, no. not to discount. There are, right? You have a lot of people signed up. Right. Um, Dubai in November, part of something called Bright Star Foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, we're bringing a lot of the expressive arts over to the Middle East because mm -hmm. yeah. they don't mm -hmm. have it. Um, and so I'm all hooked up with art therapist and music therapist and, you know, yes. that kind of thing. And then and New York City. Oh, okay. I'll be in New York City in September. Okay. And and you and just had one in LA like in November, right? Uh, October. Uh, okay. Yeah. But you'll, you'll, you'll keep us posted. Typically do another... one a year in LA yeah. now, one a year in New York, one in London, and somewhere in the Middle East or India once a year. And it's basically a weekend, and then they get to leave being fully certified in the autism movement therapy. They don't have to have a dance background, they although do it not helps. They don't have to be ABT dancers, no. Right, but it helps. It's always beneficial, but I always say, look, if you've got the desire and yeah. the drive and you want to bring movement and music to kids with disabilities, yeah. sign yeah. yourself right up yes. because it's a 10-hour, two-day commitment. Yeah. Um, they walk away with licensed music that I license for autism movement therapy. Yeah. And so they've got the music and they've got the curriculum for a 45-minute movement and music class for people with disabilities. And it's amazing, you guys. It's just amazing. So definitely check out Joanne's book. Um, you also have a book about autism movement therapy. I do. Yeah. Autism movement therapy, waking up the brain. So go to her website, autismmovementtherapy.org, and check out her store there to support her and what she's doing and support yourself and the people in your life that you care about. And I have my fingers crossed for a third children's book that's now in proposal at yeah. uh, Future Horizons. Do you sleep? While well, you're uh, resting, right? Yeah, right? <laughs> She's a slouch. That's um, about bullying, though, uh, for oh, second grade. What a wonderful mm. And I'm so hoping they're going to publish it for me. All right. Um, yeah, well, got my fingers crossed on that. Pretty fabulous. I want to thank both of you for being yeah, here pleasure. with us. Uh, this has been really exciting, and we can't wait to see what you plot together. So come back and check in with us. Uh, we we want to thank everybody for being here with us. want to tell you about what's happening the rest of this week. Tomorrow, we're showing a best of Temple Grand, and it's really the best of all the interviews that we've done with Temple Grand, and I know you guys are going to love that. On Wednesday, we are told that we have Dr. Doreen Grampuche here with us answering your questions live. Let's keep our fingers crossed to that. Uh, and then on Friday, and, and we're, to, we're to be announced because we have a big guest that Maybe here on Thursday, but I can't say. I can't say yet. But um, on Friday, we have uh, Katrina Aguilar, the singer oh. that Joanne knows, because she sang an She's event that excellent. you benefited from. She's like.
like off the charts remarkable, right? She's musical comedy, and she's unbelievable. Wow. She went to Boston mm -hmm. Conservatory. Yeah, wow. she's lovely. She's so, yeah. wow. she's going to be joining it. Nancy and I here for Let's Talk Autism with Shannon and Nancy. We're really excited to have her. We had her on the show briefly when you were here with Kiki. just a video though. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we're we're excited to have her back. We had her up just a little bit live from her backyard. Do you remember that? Yeah. But is Clifford Bell going to be with her? Or she's coming all. On My her understanding own? is she's coming all on her own. Good. She so, lives in San Diego. Uh, well, she'll Skype with us. Oh, she's she'll Skype. Skype. But we'll have a full okay. interview with her. Where, where before okay. it was just you know like a couple of seconds. Good. Yeah. So anyway, we're really excited to bring you that and more. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye bye for now. <laughs>